Storygram Network. Hosting for this podcast is generously provided by Transistor at Transistor.fm. If you would like It's Not About Food podcast a week earlier and ad-free, please support me on Patreon.com forward slash It's Not About Food. For more information about my books, my work, and my body love cards, you can go to my website at itsnotaboutfood.com. Hi, my name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. So it's not about food, and it's not about weight. What is it about? Everything else because it's never ever about food or weight, never ever, not even one time, not ever, ever, ever. Hello everyone, this is Laura Lee Rourke from It's Not About Food podcast. Thank you so much for being here today, really appreciate it. And today we're gonna do something completely different than what we normally talk about, which is The idea of calling in our guides and our angels and our ancestors and our spiritual selves when we're struggling with the world as the world is or our lives as they are, whatever it is that we're working on, even if it's just a lot of happiness and gratitude, you know, (laughs) but how do we sort of reach into deep within ourselves to get help from a higher power, if you will? For me, like I was suffering so much from my eating disorder and my addictions and my everything that I suffered from for so long and really felt completely alone all the time, very isolated and very alone in this. Even when I did have people around me, I felt alone. And when I was able to open up to a bigger part of the world than just myself, it really did help. And so today I have my friend Krista with me to talk about this. And she has a great new workshop, a new group that she's doing about angels. And I am just always been very big about angels. So I wanted to have her on to talk about these wonderful creatures that are here for us and talk about that. So I'm going to introduce Krista and she'll tell us what she's been doing these few days and months. And she wrote a great book and I had her on, I don't know, a year or two ago about her book that is really fabulous too. So she can talk about that. But whatever you want to talk about, Krista, let's have you share your strength and hope. Laura Lee, hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's really good to be back. And as I was saying, we met up, gosh, in 2007, if you can believe it. So you and I have known each other a long time. And I'm really grateful to back in 2020 when you had me on for my book, Will and Mysteria, Two Inseparable Yogis. That was just a super fun conversation and super supportive to me. So thank you for that. It's good to be back. It's good to be back here with you. We always dive deep and go to interesting places. So here we are. I really was entering into this new year and the angels really came strongly upon me as something given the where our world is right now. We're, you know, very divided, very upside down. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of uncertainty with world wars and things looming. So I really felt left to our own resources. We feel a little bit small and probably helpless on many levels. And like you said a minute ago, a little bit alone. And I felt we need some help. And it may not be that our fellow man and our neighbor is the ideal person. It might be something much (laughs) higher and more ethereal than that. So I've been doing for about two and a half years over COVID, a commit to shift meditation program where people meet with me Monday through Friday for the month. And we pick a theme for the month and we dive into that. So this year in the change of 2023, I decided to do a workshop the day of the new year to usher in the angels for 2023 because I thought they were going to be really needed. And so it was beautiful. We did a workshop at Citrine here in Marin County and we had a really oversold crowd. I was amazed at how many people wanted to be a part of it. And we were able to really explore 
what it will mean to bring, you know, some of the traditional angels, if you will, into our world that we all know from biblical text and different storylines and what have you. But what I really learned as I was diving deep into angels, I wanted to really understand where they're coming from. Who are they? What is it that we're connecting with? And the one beautiful thing is the number of angels available to us is incomprehensible. It's incomprehensible. There's tens of thousands times tens of thousands times tens of thousands. Okay, so why is it important? I mean, we know a handful of the seven angels of the Book of Enoch and all these other angels, but why is it so important that there's so many of them? Well, it's really interesting because when you look at the word angelos, the actual meaning of it, it actually means messenger. And in Hebrew, in the Bible 114, it means ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Wow. Okay, I want to say that again because it's ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. What is salvation? Who's inheriting salvation? Which is really an important factor. Right. I looked at that a little deeper. And what that is, that's the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. So... It's super important that we sort of make some sort of connection so that we can be part of this salvation and we can part, we can all be part of those who are going to be serving humanity going forward and the salvation of humanity, keeping us from harm and from safe. And so these angels, the multitudes of angels that are available to us, known and unknown, because many people have their own private angels, believe it or not. And I'm going to, I'll talk about that. But we can call on the Archangel Michaels of the world and the Gabriels and the Raphaels and Uriels and, you know, all of those. And they are here for us, especially if you're paying attention and reach out. But there also can be your own little private angel. And I think many people along the way have had angels unbeknownst to them, step in and save them from a car hitting them or whatever it's been. Some of your students who have been on the brink of deep depression have probably been saved by an angel that has swept in and turned them away from something that would have been more detrimental to them. And you don't really often give that credence to them, but the more that you pay attention to them and the more that you feel that they're in your life, the more active they become. Yes, I agree. The more you invite them in, the more they will go, great, we'll show ourselves. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So it was really interesting because I felt like when I brought them in and we meditated on them daily, really like profound stuff started to happen, like on so many different levels. And so before I go into that, I thought I might speak about a few of the main angels that people kind of know and understanding a little bit of who they are and why you would call them in in the first place. Like, when would you call them in? And, you know, you can call them in every day. Just be like, hey, angel world, I want to be a part of you. Like, and then whoever (laughs) is supposed to come in will come. Right. But there are times when we're in like great need, if you will. And then you need to maybe call in a specific angel for a specific reason. And that's always kind of nice to be like, okay, Uriel, I need you now. So we do have the beautiful Archangel Michael, who is called the Shining One, and he is the leader of all the angels. He's probably next to the Seraphims, the closest to God, along with Gabriel, who is the messenger that goes back and forth. And Archangel Michael is here to protect us, and he's particularly here to protect the children. And he's a very gentle giant. He's quite large and luminous in his energy, but he's quite gentle in his spirit. You know, I had one experience with him when I was in San Miguel. I had literally become what they call one of the fallen women of San Miguel. And if anyone's ever been to San Miguel Allende, the cobblestones are so uneven. And so I walked out of the church and I fell and sprained my ankle the day before I was going to leave. And I, I couldn't walk on it. I couldn't put any pressure on it. So That night, I knew it was going to be really hard to get through airports and get back to America. So I just called. And if you know anything about San Miguel Allende, Mexico, Archangel Michael is the patron saint of the town. Right. I called on him. I said, please, this is really painful that I cannot walk on this. This is going to be a really tough day tomorrow. So please help me. Went to bed, woke up the next day. I was fine. I wrapped it. I could walk on it. I'd hurt still. I'm not saying I was completely healed, but I just could get right through the airport. And magically, I get on my shuttle and the guy's from Marin where I live and he helps me the whole way. He carries my bag. He takes me. I was like, oh my gosh, 
Oh, yeah. like Archangel Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the fun part. Like these really neat things start showing up. So it's beautiful what comes up. Now we have other angels that are here for us, as I was saying, like Raphael, which is He's the angel of actual love, but he's the angel of healing. And what Raphael would argue is that love is what heals everything, ultimately. Like, I know we think it's like a doctor that comes in or this or that, but your doctor comes in with love, hopefully, and that's where the greatest healing is going to happen. Right. And so the healers that you're with, if they're actually operating from love, that's when the healing starts to happen because you have faith that the love is going to heal you. And so Raphael is when you're sick really good to call in Raphael and be like, Hey, I need a lot of love. I need a lot of self-love and then bring in whatever healer has the love that I need to Mm. heal this. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And a lot of people really go to the Christos. They go to Yeshua, Jesus, and being in the light of the supernal light of Christos. And so Raphael and Jesus, because Jesus walked the earth, really just teaching the teachings of love are very connected, very connected. So really beautiful. So either one would really serve you on the angelic front of healing. Uriel, he walked around with a beautiful scroll in his hand, his book, and he's kind of the historian. He's kept everything in check. He kind of serves you in a way that if, uh, let me tell you a few things that he did. He basically was the angel that marked the doors with the red X over Passover. So God Ah. would pass over those homes. So that's Uriel, which is really amazing. In the book of Enoch, he was the one who warned Noah that a major flood was coming. So Noah would build a boat and hold on to humanity. So he was quite the messenger in that standpoint. I love Uriel. I often go to Uriel to really get a download of what's going on in my life or what's going on in the world at large. You can really sit down with music because Uriel loves music. So if you put on really soothing music and I often put a chair and I walk around the chair and I walk around a specific way. I walk around it to my right. Okay. And then I travel around the chair in a circle and I ask Archangel Uriel to come in and to share everything and anything he can undisturbed and wow. to have, may I be protected. And then I sit in that little circle with music and a notebook and I just tune in and I just wait for Uriel to arrive and you will feel Uriel. Uriel comes in energetically and a feeling you might see it. It depends on how you attain information. Are you clairsentient where you feel stuff? Are you clear audience where you hear things? Are you clairvoyant where you see things? Uriel will come in the way that you can comprehend Uriel. But I often have a notebook and I often start it and have questions I might want to ask Uriel. So I get really what I need from my visit. So Uriel is really powerful. And it's really interesting because if you notice, all of these angels' names have the E-L at the end. And it's like Elohim. And Elohim comes out of the Hebrew Bible of God. So so like God is of these angels. Yes, of course. And I referred to them earlier, my favorites, and I have worked with them quite a bit. And they've come in on certain occasions for me, are the seraphims. The seraphims are closest to the throne of God. In fact, the beauty of the seraphims is they're white, fiery light. So if you can imagine, it's like wispy, white, fiery light. And they are, they, some would argue that they're in dragon form. I don't know. I think of them just as angelic angels. But interesting is they have three sets of wings. So their first set of wings covers their eyes because they are so close to God They have to cover their eyes. The brilliance of God is so enormous. They can't be up close and listen to him and see him or her, however you want to look at it, and be able to witness him because it's too too much. much. Yeah. And then the second pair of wings gives them the ability to fly so they can zoom in on a moment's notice and be where they need to be. And then the other set of wings cover their feet because in the midst of their godliness, they are covering their unworthiness. They actually have a lot of like feet for some reason have always been symbolic of something that you don't show the soles of your feet to the Lord. You you cover them up. So these seraphims have these three sets of wings. And I do a, a great story about the seraphims in the sense that I was at an event and I'm not going to give very many details, but it was an event in the Bay area and it was a breathwork event And it was, there were quite a few people there and I did not know the teacher. And yet I was 
good to go. And if you know anything about breath work, you often lay on the floor. I am a breath work teacher. You do whole entropic breath work and there's a lot of music that gets attached to it that's to really initiate a movement inside your body and to really have your breath take you into what I would call almost like an ayahuasca journey. It literally ignites your DMT so that you begin to see and feel like what's being left in your cell structure. So it lodges it. But what was interesting in this event is I laid down and I was getting really disturbed by the music. The music was very odd and I'm a sound and frequency person and I felt like it was demonic. (laughs) I was shocked. It was just like there were very weird sounds coming out. And so I got up and went to the bathroom. And it was really weird because someone left a post-it on the mirror in the bathroom. And it said, there's only God. And I said, oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's only God. And I said, (laughs) what do I do here? I feel like all of these people are new to breath work. And they're being enrolled in what feels like a darker experience, not the experience that I think they should having and why I know this I don't know but this is what's running through my soul and my body so I went back in I was told to go back in and I laid down amongst these 30 people and my body turned completely into white light and out of my body came all these seraphims and they flew across the room and blanketed all the people throughout the room oh my gosh sense their energy and so I was like Okay. And then the music started to change, which was so interesting. Like all this better music started coming in. So I was like, whoa, that was beautiful. And I'm just an instrument for this. And I'm just going to trust what's happening. And I'm not going to make anything out of it. Afterwards, it was really interesting. You know, everyone got to hang out afterwards and have wine and sit and talk. And three or four women were telling me, they were like, wow, I didn't understand what was going on. It just felt really dark. And then all of a sudden, I said, how did the end feel? They're like, oh, it got so much more peaceful. It just got so much better. So I was like, oh my gosh, so cool how this works. And in all of us, I mean, we're all instruments for God. We're all instruments of peace. We're all instruments. But we have to know that we are. We have to remember that's who we actually are. So with that... Another thing that's super important is if you're not mixing and mingling with these biblically written angels that are truly here and doing work on so many planes, many people have their own private angel, like someone who has maybe shown up to them and maybe they know them through a feeling or know them through a voice that they hear. Like your guardian angel. Exactly. If you would like to have a weekly newsletter that has some information about recovery, or what people are doing in the world, or what I'm doing in the world, and just information about how to recover and what to do, and how do we have faith and trust and love and openness to our own selves. You can go to my website at it's not about food.com. Storygram Network. Welcome to One Media, One Media. I- <laughs> when you're whining with nurses. <laughs> It's a place I like to call The Bleed. My name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. Storygram Network. I joined Beyond Hunger about three years ago after my own eating disorder recovery. I've been with the Peer Ed program for over a year. I have been a peer educator for a few weeks now. Beyond Hunger is an amazing organization in which high schoolers like me get to go to schools across the Bay Area and educate teens and students on mental health, body image, intuitive eating. I joined because it really helps people. I joined the program because I believe that the information we provide people my age is very important. Beyond Hunger has allowed me to connect with the youth in my community and reaffirm to myself what I know is true. It has given me an opportunity to educate others and inform others around my age. Um, And I just think it's a really wonderful program. Because I want to teach other teens what I never learned. Appreciating your body through its ups and downs, navigating diet, diet culture, and learning about intuitive emotions and hunger. And I felt that it was super important to continue to make change in the community. My name is Laura Lee Rourke, and I am one of the founders of Beyond Hunger. My business partner, Carol Normandy, and I founded it in 1988. But for the last 25 years, we've been going into schools and talking about the issue of eating disorders and body hatred. 
We um, train young women to go in with us, peer to peer, student to student, and it is a wonderful program. Please give generously. Thank you. I want to ask you one thing about this wonderful experience that you had. This is getting dark. You left the room and then somehow the energy changed when you came back because you reminded yourself or you got the reminder of all is God. Did you talk to the teacher? Did you tell the teacher that this is what happened? I chose not to. I should have in some ways, but she was very busy with lots of people. And I really felt like what I was meant to do there, I did. Whatever I was supposed to do. I didn't feel like it was my place to correct her. I don't know that. And maybe if I had another opportunity to meet up with her, I might share it with her in a different format than that evening. Yeah. Just as an interesting thing, I wonder if she noticed it. But what's really great is you got that validation. You knew something changed. It changed in you. But then other people saw it too. And they felt it. They couldn't understand. They really felt afraid. They said they were very afraid in the beginning. Wow. Three people said that. And I could see where that music, it was very scarring. Frequency and sound is so important. What you surround yourself with in the realms of people, their voices, the music you choose, all of that really matters. Right. It can really help heal you in the moment if you're around something that soothes your spirit. It's so true. I really appreciate you telling me about that. Back to the guardian angel. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, I had two incidences in my life, which I'll make these stories brief, where the same angel showed up, which I'm just like, okay, now this is super cool. And I didn't know he was a guardian angel till later. I didn't put it together just because we get things when we get things. So many years ago, I had a client who gave me her house. I, I think I was watching her dogs out at her house at Stinson on the beach. And it was a lovely little house. And I got up one morning and it was so foggy. You couldn't see but three feet in front of you. But I went down to the beach and because it was so foggy and I couldn't see anybody on the beach. I didn't see a soul for like 30 minutes. I decided to do something based off a poster I saw. I was going to take my shirt off. I had shorts on and be half naked. And I was going to dive in and liberate myself in the water. Like just give oh. myself a sacred bath. Oh my so gosh. I, so I did. I threw my shirt off. I dove into the water. I was swimming. I was like, oh, this feels so good. And it's foggy and it's so beautiful. And then there was like light streaming in through the fog. And then I looked back at the beach and there's this little old man. He's not very tall. He's got bristly white hair. And he's like holding a towel like this. And he's come in. And I was like, why? Like I, and then I'm like, why are you watching me? Like, are you What's the matter with you? Or her or something? Yeah, like, what's going on? Exactly. And all of a sudden he goes, no, come in. And then he goes like this. He goes, look, like he was pointing. And I turn around and I'm not kidding. There's a fin of a shark right behind me. Oh and my I'm, God. <laughs> I just, oh my God. So I just start walking and then I start diving and, and I start going towards shore. And I literally go towards this man. And it is a little chilly as I'm getting out because the water was quite cold. He wraps this towel around me I was like and then I turn around and he's gone he's gone right he's gone and I'm just sitting there with this towel I don't know where this towel came from I didn't bring it nothing so that was mind-blowing and I was like I was just looking around I'm like wow what is going on here but I had to let it go I just because what do you I didn't know how to make sense of it no how do you how do you find that man <laughs> I know, exactly. Right. So then fast forward, like maybe five or six years, I'm with a friend and he and I are hiking and we're on the back of Mount Tam. I should give some backstory on him. We're just friends. He was married once upon a time. He was hiking with his then wife and something happened to her. She just slipped and fell and hit her head on a rock. And it's interesting because that day, he was going to separate from her. And then this incident happened and she ended up in a coma for six months and he ended up staying by her bedside for six months and they reacquainted their relationship and stayed married, which I find fascinating. But lo and behold, the time he's with me, he is divorced now. And he and I are walking along and it's this back side of Mount Tam 
And the ravines and valleys that go down are like 80 feet. Like it's a pretty steep incline. And we're walking along and I'm ahead of him. And all of a sudden, I've never done this. I ran a hiking door business. I miss my foot. Wow. And I start flying down the mountain. <gasps> I went about 10 to 15 feet when I was able to finally grab a branch. And I was like holding on to this branch. My friend was paralyzed. It's like he got re-traumatized by his wife falling. And he couldn't even move. He was like watching me and I was like, help, because I was like dangling and I was about to drop. And all of a sudden, this little man appears. And the funny thing is, is he's in a rugby outfit. It's like he was playing <laughs> rugby in some other continent or some other planet. It was right. so weird. And he, he literally goes to my friend. He's like, dude, snap out of it. Snap. I need you now. Help. And the two of them used each other and climbed down and grabbed my arm. And between the two of them, they pulled me up. And I'm t looking at him, talking to him, going, what happened to you? Like, oh, my God. And I turn around, gone. He is, we can see the trail for like, wow. uh, I don't know, a block or so. And he's gone, nowhere to be found. And to this day, this friend of mine, whenever I bring up that story, he will not talk to me about it. Like it freaks him out. Like the whole story freaks him out. So it's the same little guy, yeah. that same old man. So I just like, and I have not seen him since. Thank God I've been safe. I've been okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Wow. Um, I just tell that story because I think we all have those beings, whether they show up in physical form or in some other energetic form. We've all had moments where, if not once, multitudes of times that we've been helped, like out of really precarious situations. You're in servitude, right? You're always helping people. And when you choose that path, no matter if it's just helping your kids, like a mother, like you're going to get these, I think, angels to show up because you're needed here. You're needed for the salvation of humanity. So they're going to make sure you stick around. And then it's really important to, through meditation and through just being quiet and still, to just them in when I like to call them in on a daily basis because they're the messengers for God. They're the helpers and we're here, all of us. And so I think it's a hard time on the planet right now. And the thing is, is the revelations, if you will, said that there will be false prophets. There will be people who will, you know, Lucifer's one of the fallen angels and he comes in many disguises and he comes in many glittery, shiny things that can be very seductive, very provocative, and you can get really interested in them thinking you're getting connected to the angels that are living on the most high, when in fact, these are false angels. And I say that because people have to be, you know, what is seducing you is not, God doesn't seduce. Right. It just not is. It invites you and you are free. You have free choice. You have sovereignty. You get to choose to be a part of darker like energies will try to seduce you, manipulate you, coerce you. And people should get a little leery of that. You know, and is that kind of the angel that I really want to hang out with, even though they appear sweet and nice and very giving and that sort of thing? I think we have to be careful. I'm sorry to say that because I didn't think the world was like that for a really long time. But of late, I've been like, Asking people to be, you know, on high alert and really trust that you're dealing with the most high. You're dealing well, with yeah. Light. Go to your intuition and your consciousness and bring the most positive energy. And another thing that I've done a lot or I've told people to do is they're having a problem with their boss or they want some kind of connection with somebody. And it's like, well, ask your angel. Are your angels to go talk to that person's angels? <laughs> Put it on a different level <laughs> than a spirit to spirit conversation, which you can, like either your angels can have it, or even you and your spirit and their spirit can have it. You have to ask always for permission and ask if his if their spirit will show up. And if it does, then you can really send beautiful messages to them. Yes. And the angels will usually swoop in and help if they can. Definitely. I, I always think of it as awesome. like a little angel conference, you know. Listen, my boss says this and this and this. And so can your boss say this and this and this? You know, anyway, I was born and raised Catholic, so I don't have any problems with angels. Yeah, all over you know, the place. I mean, we all like walked away from it a bit and went into the New Age movement. Sure. 
And we learned about all these other, I mean, the Bible has so many unaccounted years for Jesus, and it's indicated that he traveled through India and a bunch of places and learned, you know, about Buddhism and learned about, you know, he was like us, he was in a human body. So he had to learn just like we're learning. But I love that I think he was here to teach about love. And love is like, so weird how hard sometimes it is on this planet to first love yourself and then to really show up and love others fully without feeling embarrassed or like awkward or whatever, you know, so it it just depends on your family of origin, of course, like what you grew up with, what you were fed, speaking of food being the love you were actually fed. You know, I was talking today with my meditation group about do we learn or do we remember? And I find that to be a really interesting question. I don't know if that you've ever had any thoughts. That is a really interesting question. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I think Do we um, already know all this anyway and we're just reminding ourselves by it? Exactly, exactly. And it begs the question of is our school system really set up for all of who we can be? Are oh, they really sure. nurturing the entirety of our existence? Because I think they want us in a a lot of the school setups that we've had to date have wanted us to stay in these little boxes and they really wanted to honor the chakras and the intuition and the understanding and really because we all know remembering something I call it the ding like we get this little ding that says oh yeah 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 even though I feel like I'm learning this I already know this I already I, know it yeah I'm just getting reminded of how amazing this is and putting it back because our Akashic records are like you know, our files go miles, miles out. So all of a sudden, boom, a file's coming in from our Akashic records and we're being reminded of what we already know. Yeah, or you meet somebody that's, you already know that you know them, but you've never met them before, but you know them or you just immediately have that connection. And we traveled to Bali. We went to Bali together. Hold on him. (laughs) We went to Bali together And that whole place was an altar, like those little altars everywhere, every little corner and every little step and every little nook and cranny everywhere, and not even a nook and cranny, just right out there in the middle of everything. And I remember that one place where we stayed that had a huge angel outside of one of the yards. I don't know if you remember that, or maybe I just dreamed it, but... I got sick right around that time, but this huge angel must have been 12 feet high of, and just like the long skirt and everything. And I just felt like it was such a protected place for us. Yeah, you know, know, it's beautiful about those older cultures like the Balinese and the Indian and what have you, because they get up and the first thing in the morning that they do is, you know, like in India, the women go out and get the cow patties and then they bring in and they bring the candles in and they do puja first thing in the morning. We here in America, first thing in the morning, we get our phones out, we get really heady, we go (laughs) coffee and, and we get every worry in the world coming through our phones. So we're just like in a toxic soup before eight o'clock and before we've ever even put our feet on the floor (laughs) exactly exactly and then in these Balinese and Indian cultures and these older cultures they knew back in the day that it was so important to make your spirituality and your divine connection first and foremost and to start your day from that magical place And that's why I do the meditation in the morning. I've been asked by a lot of people, can you do it at night? I'm like, no, you got to start your day with meditation. Like, you know, really set up your day. Because we we do a lot of light, moving light through the body when we meditate. And and that's just a great setup for the day. You go out protected, in the light, really grounded. And instead of filling our minds with just a bunch of garbage from our tech. Yeah. I just really remember that so very much of... uh, just walking down the street and there's an altar and then turn here, there's an altar there, you know, with a flower and a little piece of bread and a little teacup and a little whatever they were given to the spirits of the day. Yes, the offering. Right. They're, they're so offering. Right. Yeah, knowing that it's like an exchange. If I offer you this, you'll help me. Like, and, you know, we're in America, we're a little greedy. Yeah, I'm going to keep everything for myself. Yeah. <laughs> Just so great to have this talk with you. And I'm wondering if people want to get more information about this or 
how they can contact you and how they can get on your list of angel talks or whatever it is that you're doing. Great. You can reach out to me through my email, Krista, C-H-R-I-S-T-A dot Reynolds, R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S at Comcast.net. Or you can reach me at my book. I have my website, which is Will and Mysteria, the book.com. And just say what you're interested in because I do angel readings. I'm going to be doing more angel workshops in the future. And I can give you the dates and times of those. You can also find me through my book online, which is Will and Mysteria, the book. Dot com, and you can learn more about all the things that I do on that website. And I just have loved being here. It's been so fun to talk about angels. There's just magic everywhere. So I'm hoping through this talk, you guys will just ignite angels in your own life. Just bring them in and start having them be around you so that you can be protected and supported, and especially in these trying times in the world. We don't know what's going to happen with some of these patriarchal mental minds. <laughs> we need them so, all the time. We need as much help as we can get. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, exactly. thank you so much, Krista. And be well and be your best self as you always are. And I really appreciate you being on today. I've loved it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. See you later. Okay, blessing. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. You can find me on all the social medias at It's Not About Food. And if you would like to get the show a week early and ad free, you can become a member at Patreon. Search It's Not About Food podcast. Thanks so much.